All right, hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. This one's going to be relatively quick. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to make that custom gravity script that I made I showed off yesterday. Some people were asking to see how it was done. Uh, this was just something I was prototyping just for that physics gun level I've been working on, but I'll go ahead and show you what I did for this prototype. So let me just quickly demonstrate it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and click. And if we press Q, we spawn a little crate. And then if we press V, it goes gravity down, and then B pulls it back up and down and up. And if you spam them together, you can kind of get it like to float or rotate a little bit. And it's just like, bye. So it's pretty straightforward. And then let me show you the volumes. See, we're not in the volume right now. See this pink line? That's our gravity volume. As soon as we get in and jump, we're all the way up here. So it doesn't really work on the pawn that well, but it does work on K actors. Oh, and I'm dead. Um, so let me break down what we do. <clears throat> uh, so the first thing is we have a gravity volume. So our gravity volume is right here. And if we hit F4, we'll see the properties. Right now its gravity is set to 5,000. That means it'll shoot up. So the normal gravity, I believe, is at negative uh, 520 or 480, something like that. Uh, that's normal gravity. Um, and what we do is a couple things um, that we change in this property here. Uh, we'll break down each one in a little bit. The other thing we have here, our path node, this is where we spawn in crates, our K actors. It's pretty straightforward. We've done this in the past before. The last thing we do in terms of actors in a level, it's this actor right here. It's our RB underscore cylindrical force actor underscore zero. Right now, it's 4096 by 4096 by 496. So it's a large force actor. And the reason why it's so large is because there has to be constant force applied um, to an object so it can react properly to our change in gravity. Don't know really how to explain it past that point, um, but we'll go ahead and break things down a little bit. Um, but the last thing we do in our Kismet, relatively simple setup. Uh, first thing is um, when we press the key button, whenever we press Q, um, that spawns a K actor. And the character is just a simple crate. Uh, we scaled it down a little bit. And then we also uncheck no encroach check just so it can react to volumes and triggers and things like that. Uh, but past that point, it's relatively straightforward. There's nothing different with that actor factory spawning. The only thing we really do to make this work is the key button for V and B. So V is in Victor, B is in Boy. Um, when we press V, we modify the gravity Z property in our, in our gravity volume. Um, we make, whenever you press V, we make the gravity negative 5,000, which brings it down. And then when we press B, we make the gravity Z 5,000, which brings it up. So let's go ahead and just demonstrate this one last time. So let's spawn our thing. So we're going to have it going up. So if we press V, it comes down. And B, it goes back up. Relatively straightforward. Nothing, nothing too crazy with that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and just break everything down. Kind of start from scratch. The last thing I do down here, it's nothing important. I just give myself a rocket launcher. Um, so a player spawned, you know, give inventory, and you clear existing and force the replacement of whatever inventory list you want to put in. And I did rocket launcher content, and that's what gives me a rocket launcher. So that's very straightforward. Um, there's nothing crazy you need to really do with that. So the first thing I want to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put in our gravity volume. So let's get our builder brush and right click on the cube and let's just make it 4096. 4096 by 2048. That should be enough. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to snap this into place. <clears throat> All right. Alright, so I'm coming to see most at this level. Um, last thing I want to do, I just want to move it a little forward. 
So just a smaller area relatively. So now we have our volume that we want the gravity to be involved with. Let me just modify this a little bit more. That's good. Now that we have the volume here for our builder brush, let's go under volumes, click on that, and let's choose gravity volume. And then when you drag that away, our gravity volume is just a pink volume. So what you'll need to do now is hit F4. And there's a couple properties here that we want to go ahead and modify. The first one is gravity Z. So right now by default it's negative 520. Um, in Unreal, that's you know the normal acceleration of gravity, you know, 9.81 mil meters per second squared. Um, so that makes you you know jump up and down. You know, it's how the function of the gravity works. Uh, but the first thing we want to do, just for my setup, is to have the box shoot all the way up. So we're gonna actually make it positive 5,000, just because that's what I've come to know about the speed. And then zone velocity, we're also gonna make that 5,000 in the Z. Just to make sure that the z-axis is the same here. Um, if you were to change any of these values, so say for example, we go and make x 5,000 in the x direction, it's going to start shooting it that that way, I guess is the best way to say it. But we're only messing with the z-axis. So we're going to go ahead and just make that 5,000. <clears> the next thing we want to go ahead and check is physics on contact. So basically, um, if this touch, it, like as long as there's an actor that touches the volume, this will get affected by our gravity. So that just ensures that any any K actors that come in, um, they'll be affected by the gravity in a, in a nutshell. Um, so what else we want to do? We want to process all actors. So we want to include K actors, the player, and we're also going to do um, force pawn walk. This will just allow players to walk through and get affected by it. I believe that's the only other setting that we want to go ahead and change. Let me just double check. Okay, yeah, that's all the settings we want to make uh, changes to. So all we really did is physics on contact, force pawn walk, and process all actors. And then we just made sure these were both 5,000. We're not really going to work, work with ground friction or terminal velocity or anything like that. And we don't want any damage to take place, so we don't want to do any damage affecting. So that's all we really need to do for our gravity volume. So if we were to just go ahead and jump in right now, and then jump, we just go blah. We're all the way up on the ceiling. And then when we get out of the volume, we fall. But if we get back in, jump, we're back up. <clears throat> that's how it works. Um, but that's for the player. Um, the pawn's a little more harder to control with gravity volumes on how to do it you know, on its own. That's why we did it with K actors. Uh, but the next thing we're going to set up is that uh, radial force actor. So what we'll do, we'll go into our content browser, actor classes, and I just type in force. And if you look under here, you'll see RB underscore cylindrical force actor. We've got drag him in our scene. And then we want this force actor to really encompass the entire area that you want it to be affected by the gravity, because it um, in order for objects to really react properly to the gravity, they need to have at least an initial force applied to them. That's why if we play in our level, and like we're only in the volume once you know there's a force applied to us. See how I'm not doing anything? But if there's a force, and by force I mean the space bar when you jump, you'll, and then you'll bloop all the way on the bottom. But let's go ahead and modify this here. Um, so the first thing we want to do here is just change the radius. So the force radius is going to be 4096. Uh, the force top radius is going to be 4096, and so is the force height. So we got it encompassing the entire kind of level here, a little more than we need, but that's okay. The next thing we're going to do is uh, force active. We want to make sure this is activated right at the start. And then the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to uncheck the pawn just so the player is not affected by it. And then what we're going to do next is this needs to give us some lift strength at least. So we're going to put one. That is enough for our K actors to be affected by it. And that should be the last property we need to modify here. We are good to go in that regard. So the last thing we need to do is actually spawn K actors. So the first thing we're going to need for that is a path node, just so we know where we want to spawn it. So we'll just place it somewhere in here, which is fine. Um, so that's enough, the position that it's in. So let's go into Kismet. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is set up um, keyboard input for spawning K actors. So I'll right click, 
new event, and then we're going to do uh, input key button pressed. By default, it's set to zero for Mac trigger count, so you can activate this as many times as you want. So we're going to add a new item. I did Q, um, but you can make any key, you know, key binding you want. But I'll just stick with Q. And every time we press Q, we want to spawn a new key actor. So let's go to new action actor, actor factory. Plug pressed into spawn actor. And then making sure that the path node is selected in the editor, let's right click on spawn point and then use our, our path node as the spawn point. Then in the actor factory itself, hit this blue down arrow. We'll go to UT actor factory UT K actor. And the only things we really need to adjust with this is we need to give it a static mesh. So let's go into our content browser. You go to stack meshes, and I'll just get type in create. Found this one. Keeping it selected in the content browser. Let's go ahead and hit this green arrow for the stack mesh. You'll know we selected that one. And then for the draw scale, I just made it 0.5 in all three axes uh, just to make it smaller. And then the last thing we do is the no encroach check. We uncheck that just so it can react to volumes, triggers, just in case we needed to do that. So let's just see if that's working for us. So let's spawn in. And if we hit Q, bloop, there it is. And we can keep spawning them as many times as we want. And they all react. So now that's working. But now we need to be able to control the volume, the gravity, which direction it's going into. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, those are going to involve, just for this purpose, just key bindings. But you can make these triggers. You can make them whatever you like. So for key, the first key binding, we'll do V as in Victor, and then the second one is going to be B as in Bravo. So whenever we click V, we want the meshes to come back down. So it's going to be negative 5,000 because positive 5,000 shoots them up. So what we need to do is new action, object property, and modify property. So let's first plug that in. Let's do that for both because they're both going to need to modify property at one point. And what the target is going to be our gravity volume. So let's just grab the volume in the editor. And then right click on target. Do new object variable. And then in the first modify property, the one with V, we're going to make this um, because we want this to make it come back down. So that's going to be negative 5,000. So let's go to properties and then add a new item. Expand that. So the property name is gravity z with no spaces. And we're going to check modify property. And we're going to make the value negative 5,000. And the reason why the, uh, the property name is gravity z, let's go ahead and look at the properties for our gravity volume. Very top one is gravity z. So that's, what, that's basically what we're pulling from essentially. We're saying, hey, go to this property, let's modify it in Kismet. So we made that negative 5,000. And we're going to do the same thing for the second button input. Uh, so same name, gravity z, no spaces, modify property, but instead of negative 5,000, we're going to make this one 5,000. So let's show it to shoot back up again. And that's really it. Um, so let's see if that's working. So press Q will spawn. And then if we press V, it'll jump down. Press B, shoot back up. V back down, up, down. And you can press that as many times as you want. So it's pretty entertaining. Um, it's pretty interesting to see it in action. Um, so that basically is it. Um, so if you have any suggestions on other tutorials, if you have any questions, you know, always comment below. Um, what I'm going to work on is trying to control the gravity in the x and y axes. See if I can do that. See if that's possible. Right now, I can only really figure out the z axis because um, it's really done by default in Unreal. Uh, but if you guys have any um, suggestions or any leads or ideas on how to get that working, also comment. Be more happy and interested to see what you guys are doing with it. Um, if you like this video, give it a like, you know, subscribe, share, do your thing. I definitely appreciate the help and the support. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned a lot. This is really fun to make, and I'm going to start implementing this into the physics gun level soon. So keep an eye out for videos like that. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.